Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Petruto, and today I want to share with you my 10 favorite woodworking tips and tricks. Every single one of these is something that I have used in a previous video. Here we go. Number one, reinforcing miter joints. Just adding glue to a 45 is not going to be very strong and will eventually break. There are a lot of complicated ways to reinforce this, but the quickest way that I know how so once you drill that out with the Forstner bit, you can draw a circle on a piece of plywood, cut it out on the bandsaw. Or if you have a hole saw bit that's the right size, you can chuck that up in your drill press or your hand drill and cut that out. A little bit of glue in there. There we go. Reinforced miter, quick and easy. Next is if you have a gap in your mitered corner here, a quick way to fix that is throw a little glue in there and then take a screwdriver and burnish that in there until that gap is gone. Next up is cutting wood with a jigsaw. And a great trick to not cut into your bench is to get some of the foam insulation. Throw that down, and you can cut right into it. So next up is a hold down with CA glue or super glue and painter's tape. This is a trick that I learned from Crimson Guitars years ago and it works pretty awesome. So it goes like this. You lay down some painter's tape. You put some painter's tape on your piece. Put a bead of CA glue on there. That's probably more than what I need. This is the Gorilla Glue, but you could use any CA glue. This is Activator. All this does is it sets the CA glue super fast, so you don't have to wait for two minutes for it to dry. Put some Activator on the other piece, and we're going to glue it right to the bench. Check this out. And it's as simple as that. I love this trick. Another super cool trick is attaching veneer to plywood using an iron and wood glue. So what we're going to do is cover both of the pieces with glue, spread that nice and even, and we'll let that sit and dry. That is now dry. The cool thing about this trick is, unlike contact cement, you can reposition it to get it where you want it to go. If you're using contact cement, once it touches, that's where it's going to go. And you can do this over curves. So we're just gonna set our veneer on there and iron it on. This is just regular old wood glue. And it's just melting that glue and creating that bond. Here's another glue up trick that I use quite a bit. Super glue as clamps and wood glue for strength. So let's say I want to glue two pieces together and I don't want to wait for the glue to dry. I'll add some wood glue. But in between there, I will add some CA glue. I'll add some activator to this other piece here. And I can glue these two boards together and that CA glue is going to bond instantly and it's going to hold the pieces together as a clamp while the wood glue dries and that wood glue is going to be a lot stronger than that CA glue. So when I'm in a hurry, I can move on to the next step. This is the piece from the previous step that we glued together and as you can see there are big gaps in here. Quick way to fill that up is just use some CA glue and start sanding away. That sawdust 
is going to mix with that CA glue. This is a big gap, so this would be a great example. That sawdust is going to mix with the CA glue. until it's gone. And since that sawdust is the same species as the wood, it blends nice. So this is a great one for wood turners or anybody who needs to cut segments. If you have an even number of segments, glue them up in halves instead of all at the same time. Getting the precise angle is really hard. And even if you're off by just a fraction of a degree, it compounds over all of those segments. So a great wood turner's trick is to do them in halves. And as you can see, I have gaps in mine. That would not work. And I'll just stand both of these flat and check that out that is perfect no gaps the next tip is using tape when cross cutting the veneer on plywood if you don't use tape you're going to get tear out i'm going to do two cuts i'm going to show you without the tape and then i'll show you what happens with the tape You get all those little tears and you don't get a nice clean edge. So we'll put the tape on the bottom. The top is nice and clean. It's the way the teeth are oriented on the blade. Without the tape and with the tape. Much cleaner with the tape. That painter's tape is just holding those fibers down while the blade is going through there. This trick also works with the jigsaw and you'll get a lot more tear out with the jigsaw if you don't use tape. Table saw tape goes on the bottom, jigsaw tape on top. That is super obvious. I've got a lot more tips and tricks to show you, but before I do that, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Warby Parker. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. Sunglasses, progressives, and blue light lenses are also available. The process is super quick and easy. I did it myself. You answer a few questions online and Warby Parker will suggest some glasses to fit your style and face. From there, you pick five glasses to try out. They ship them right to your house and you have five days to try them on with no obligation and they even send you a prepaid shipping label to return everything when you're done. These are the five pairs that I chose after taking the quiz. High quality frames. I love that I don't have to leave the house and I can try them on by myself without feeling rushed or judged. And I can show them off to my wife to see what she thinks. It's a pretty cool system. They've got extra narrow to extra wide to fit all face shapes. Warby Parker now offers contact lenses. A 90 day pack is only $55 and they have sunglasses with or without prescriptions starting at $95. This I did not know, and I think it's great. For every pair of glasses sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need through one of their nonprofit partners. Very cool. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash make something. Again, that's warbyparker.com slash make something. Thank you, Warby Parker, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to some more woodworking tips and tricks. Sometimes you're going to come across a piece of wood that has two rough edges that are not straight. And if you need to cut a straight line, there's nothing to reference up against the fence. Now this board is short, so I could, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but if this board was longer and one point was touching back here and one up here, as it's going along the fence, it would banana and you would not get a straight cut here. Hopefully that makes sense. Basically what I'm trying to say is if you have two sides and neither one of them are straight because you have some sort of live edge board, take a piece of plywood that does have a straight edge, glue some sandpaper on there. You can clamp this down or just hold it with your hands. I got some grippy sandpaper on there. We can get a nice straight edge this way. And I can feel underneath that plywood exactly how much I'm gonna cut off 
if I bump my plywood up against the saw blade. You have one straight side. You can get rid of the sled and cut parallel pieces. So some woods tend to burn more than others and sometimes your blade is not as sharp as what you want it to be and you'll get a little burning on the edge. A way to take care of that is to cut it just slightly oversized and then do one more pass where you're just taking off a hair and you won't get that burning. And so since it's not using the full width of the blade, you get a nice clean cut with no burning. Sometimes you run out of clamps, sometimes you don't have clamps, sometimes you don't have the right clamps. A lot of times, painter's tape will work just as well. You're not gonna get the clamping pressure, but for small crafty items, it works great. So what I do is I'm making a little box here. I do this all the time with my small items. I will get things lined up and I'll, I'll pull it real tight. That way it tries to pull the pieces together. Not the clamping force that you're going to get with clamps, but for a small box like this, that's going to be great. So that tape is going to hold that together while the glue dries. Now, these are butt joints and they do need to be reinforced whether or not you're using clamps because this is end grain here and it's not a very strong joint. So what I would do is I would just drill a hole, two holes in there, and then put a dowel in there. Super strong. No clamps. Clamps are expensive. I think that's what shocks woodworkers the most when they first get started is how expensive clamps are. So if you need some more clamping pressure, screw down some scrap onto your workbench or onto a piece of scrap. Give yourself a little bit of space in between the two pieces and then throw some wedges in there. And then you can tap that in. And you get a nice tight fit, no clamps. I lied to you at the beginning of the video. I said I've used every single one of these techniques in a video. That's the only one I have never done until right now. And it's a really cool trick and I should have been using this years ago. And something else that I noticed that I could make this even better is this piece right here was not perfectly parallel with this. So there is getting a little gap in there. So instead of putting two screws, I'm just gonna try one so this can pivot. Oh yeah, that's even better. Yeah, one screw works even better. Obviously you can make your own shims on the bandsaw. I think this was actually a pack of shims that I bought from the home center a while ago. They work really well for this. This is one that I use a lot when I'm making bandsaw boxes because there's lots of curves and there's lots of glue up. And sometimes you think you've sanded away all the glue and you don't know until you add finish. So I smeared a little wood glue on there. I let that dry. We're gonna pretend like we can't see that. And when you add an oil finish, you can really see that show up because it's a lot lighter right there. Don't worry. All you have to do is just take a piece of sandpaper with the finish on there and just sand away. It'll blend in. Add a little bit more oil. That's a lot of bit actually. And it's gone. That saves my butt all the time. If you can help it, always try to clean up your glue with a wet rag when you're gluing up. You may have heard that using a wet rag on joints as they're drying is not good because it's going to weaken it. In all the years I've been woodworking, I've never had a joint fail. So I just wet your rags, clean up the glue as best you can. It's gonna make life easier down the road. But if you do get some glue on there that shows up during the finish, just sand it away. If you're new here and you enjoyed the video, think about hitting that subscribe button. I've also written three books, the new bandsaw box book, make your own cutting boards and make your own kitchen tools. I have signed copies of all of them for sale on my website. I've also got t-shirts, handmade mallets and a bunch of other stuff on my website. So check that out at make something. 
www.thepowerofpositivity.com. We'll see you in a few days with a brand new video. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. See if I can get this.